but by far the most important residents of Namaqualand are the smallest. Insects play a vital role in pollinating these desert blooms. Over thousands of years, plants have evolved all sorts of ways to try and attract the interest of a passing pollinator, giving Namaqualand a floral variety unmatched anywhere else on Earth. Some plants even use deception. The petals of this beetle daisy mimic the colours of a real beetle to try and entice pollinators hungry not for nectar, but for love. These goat's horn flowers offer a different bribe. Inside the flower are thousands of tiny but highly nutritious droplets of oil. And to get at them, this bee has evolved extra long front legs, which can gather the oil from the flower's long horns while pollen rubs off on the bee's body. It's a remarkable relationship which has formed over thousands of generations. The long, slender flowers of these Laperusia have helpful arrows, directing hungry insects to a deep well of nectar within. Once again, specialist equipment is required, this time a very, very long time. The flower reaps its reward when the fly collects a face full of pollen and carries its genes to pollinate another flower. And with a pollinator as specialised as this one, the plant can be certain that its pollen will be carried to another flower of the same species. Well, almost certain. Succulent-leafed mesembryanthemums have no nectar to offer and instead bribe monkey beetles with a meal of pollen rich in protein, though this male seems to be more interested in love than lunch. Unfortunately, it's not long before another male arrives to break up the party. These fights over the ladies can be violent enough to break a rival's legs. But this time, the interloper is driven off unharmed, leaving the happy couple safe in their petal boudoir. <laughs> 